It is your instant match reaction for Manchester United 2 Everton 0. I'm joined by Dave Downey. We are in the Denby Castle after an away game. It's not quite instant reaction today, Dave, um, because of various commitments. We've given a couple of hours. Um, so if you hear any yelps of pain or anything at any point, it's because Luton have scored against Palace. But it's still 1 0 to, to Palace. But um, I mean, it's just. It's hard to know what to say that we haven't said already. Everton doing okay, having some all right chances, missing them, and then being punished for, for mistakes they're making. It's just. It just feels like we're on a bit of a carousel of misery at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's right. I think the thing that's more um, frustrating about this one is the two goals we conceded, the two penalties we conceded, are really, really basic errors. Amateur footballers don't do the stuff that we did there. Uh, in particular, Tarkovsky, and I know the Ganacio's dived over him, but what do you expect in Premier League football? That's always going to happen. And then similar again to Godfrey, who throws himself into it. Basically saying, yeah, mate, you want a penalty? Just just throw your leg into me and you're definitely going to get one. The other two can see that, by and large, then, I don't think the teams are too different from each other. I think... Maybe the better side. Well, I think on. we were the better side. I think we were. I think particularly in the second half, we were as well. And I, th- I was waiting. To, like, I say waiting. If we'd have got a goal back then, 2-1, that, that was probably game on that. I thought we started to create stuff. Um, but for the sake of it being like Clint's edge, that, uh, when you looked at what... Um, Dobbin sent across for Calvert-Lewin Dobbin hit it wrong because he was trying to hit the target and I, I, I sort of don't blame Calvert-Lewin for that but they're the type of goals that we don't score these days that we need to I was listening to Sean Dice's post-match and he was saying as much as that um, when he said it in the last few weeks in the last few games I've been like Sean you're just, you're just trying to dig a little bit deeper for yourself but today he was right um, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been unfair on us to have got a point there or certainly not have lost that game but you're right it's um, <laughs> for us who do podcasts every single day it is difficult when we're talking about matches to find different things necessarily to say um, other than the obvious and uh, specific chances in matches but yeah I mean I, I think he sidewise I think I, I didn't think he did anything wrong with that really um, banged on before the game you know you, you've still started Harrison you've still started McNeil thought Mc, McNeil was by far the player who was going to create a chance for us not too sure he was good at any doing so but I think we had more possession than Man United it was a really strange game from going to Old Trafford because oh, then they're terrible oh yeah I mean you, you go to Old Trafford over the years even as poor as they've been over the years um, you look, you're still going to go there and think you're going to have to defend all game and, you know struggle to get a chance on the counter attack Evan, I think it was 23 shots we had in the end at Old Trafford. When did you never hear that? You know, um, and I think you're right. I think they were there for the taking had it been uh, a more efficient Everton side that can score goals. And that's just, we're just miles away from scoring goals, aren't we? Yeah. It just, like, like before the game today, and I've been saying this to people, I've not done a lot of our shows this week, um, apart from the preview, but like I've been speaking to people about this game. And the thing I've been saying to people all week is that I just sort of expect we'll go there and lose tepidly 2-0. I'm not just saying that to say, like, I was right, but it just feels like it. And this, this isn't just, like, this team, but just in general, like, Everton. I'd, I'd love for them to surprise me in a game like this where you go into a team that are better than you, admittedly, but they just go and play really well for half an hour and score a couple of goals and then hang on for the win or, you know they managed to dig out a late goal and snatch something like look at the teams that have gone there and won this season you know Fulham went there and won last week uh, Brentford uh, Brentford didn't win there Bournemouth went there and won didn't they they've been beat a couple of times in the Champions League by modest sides at home as well and you just like you just, every time we go into a game like this we're away at a team like United um, it'll be the same when we go to Chelsea in a few weeks who are you know having a pretty terrible season by their standards you just sort of think come on go and do something that's going to make us go oh Everton don't usually do that and it's just it's just the same all the time like, like the only surprise today was that Martial didn't have a miraculous recovery and come on and score wasn't it but I just again it's, it's not this is not someone that's like exclusive to this team but like we've won an Old Trafford twice in the Premier League era you know it's the same with Chelsea it's the same with Arsenal it's the same with Liverpool albeit them and Man City are a bit of a different animal now it's, it's the same with Arsenal we're just quite boring aren't we you know exactly what you're going to get when, when, when we come to one of those grounds and you know, I thought it was quite telling that anyone who didn't listen to the weekend preview when I spoke to Jay um, what's said about United and how poor they were the, one of the lines he said to me which kind of stuck with us was that stuck with me was that he, he said he felt like they need a game against Everton like that, that it's horrible to be that team isn't it and like I think that I think that 
that sort of lack of I don't know what I don't know what the right word that that lack of ability to just be like a party pooper to go to one of these big grounds and, and surprise a team that is just something that's just in our nature like it's in it's a coin one of the club's phrases it's in our DNA to just go to these places and just be boring and roll over and lose 2-0 or lose 3-0 and yeah. give them a little bit of a boost and like it ne- as much as we started well today as much as we had like spells in the game it never felt like at any point like we were going to really go there and, and do anything other than just be the other team that Man United beat do you know what it makes you feel a little bit worse funnily enough doesn't it the, you've gone there in the past sort of like expecting to lose um, and then you know it, it, like today generally going, going there expecting to lose because of how poor we've been recently and it's more frustrating that we could have gone there and got something, probably reasonably got something, had we scored a goal, had we put the ball in the back of the net. Whereas we've gone in the past when we've been a decent side and lost yeah. it and been hammered by it. That's like all the more, like, whatever here you've got left, you're pulling it out. I feel like 12 or 13 teams in the league probably go there and win today because I think they, they would, like, you know, follow a few of their sports on Twitter and, like, the journalists who follow them talking about how bad United were and they were weren't you know the first half like Casemiro like his legs were on the wrong way yeah. uh, they were giving it away constantly defensively they were, they were all over the place and I think a good side does probably what Bournemouth did to them a few weeks ago where they go bang bang in the first half 2-0 and then maybe kill it off on the counter attack because they were all over the show at times today United yeah. it, it, it was um, the thing about turning them down as well those first 10 minutes we, we probably should have gone 1-0 up in those first 10-15 minutes and then obviously the opposite happens the inevitable happens their fans quite quickly given the size of that place get on their back really really early and I thought if we can do this this is where you've got a real chance to do against these they've got a goalkeeper who I don't think is any good whatsoever we barely had a shot at him I think we had one shot at him in the first half we dominated with possession these are all things that we're not used to this season as well this is why I find it quite um quite amusing when you look back on this if you're watching it you know, in any sort of length I, I feel as if that was the case in this the space we tended to have as well um, McNeil I, I don't think I've seen a match where he has so much of the ball he's able to cut inside he's generally okay to do what he wanted to do um, but again like that cross he couldn't get in Harrison on the other side was the complete opposite of that and we moaned about him quite a lot he was dreadful um, oh, I thought Onana was dreadful for us as well to be honest with you but by and large everybody else was consistently what they should be as players and um, when he made his substitution even Beto I was looking at Beto and thought he looked half decent as well he'll create a chance there'll be something that goes near him and it did a couple of times and you know I'd, I'd, I'd really intrigued to see what had happened if he got 1-0 up because I don't know how Sean Dice would even remember how to handle this, do you know what I mean? And that, that's the thing I look back at now. The record are on to Paul and you've gone somewhere there when I wouldn't say there's an open door for you to walk through because it's still Man United, it's still Old Trafford. Um, that's still something that means a lot to clubs going there in the mentality side of things. But the, the thing that, that, like, if you look at the teams that have gone there and won this season, like, those, like Newcastle went and smashed them in the cup with like a reserve team. Like I said, you know, Fulham have gone there and won, Ball have gone there and won. Like, I think, I think a lot of teams look at them now and think these are actually quite shite yeah. and we can we can have a go at these. Like, even like even last week, you know, Fulham simply in that situation, it gets a one on. They think, right, let's, I'm going to get a draw now. But they they go for the win late on because they're thinking we we can win this. Like. I, I, I don't feel that aura about them anymore necessarily, oh, no, especially no. with the injuries they've got at the moment as well. I think that's right. I think you've got a manager that's pretty much under pressure as well. He seems every week to get beat or don't win a game. It's sort of like, oh, is, is Ten Hag, is that his last game kind of thing? Um, and that makes it all the, most fr- all the more frustration. Um, and I think listening to Dice after it, talking about this, the not so much saying the word unlucky, but he's saying, you know, it's, it's hard to grasp to, and, and sort of see it from his own perspective why this team is doing more because he said they're doing all the right things in general for the majority of games not sure I agree with that so much but he's like the, just how difficult was showing it to score goals shows you how difficult it is in this league again not sure that I believe in him with that but you, you see the amount of, we have more possession than them more possession than them I don't, and again going back to this old Trafford it's not the United they ever used to be but going on away, any away game that we have, having more possession is is a massive sort of coup for us. But yeah, we don't do anything with it. It's 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 a it's just it's hard to take and grasp that you don't score a goal in a game like that. Yeah, I think I saw a stat saying in the two games against them this season, we've had something like forty-seven shots across the two, twelve on target and no goals. Um, 
But I think, I think the fact we have more possession is dictated by the part of the game, isn't it? Like, I think as soon as they get those two early goals, they're, you know, they're not, as much as they're any a bit of a bad run at the moment, they're not that. They will know that when we've got the ball, we are terrible with it and are quite vulnerable to being hit on the break. And, you know, they, they had a couple of ones that they were going to got in on the second half trying to counter attack. It felt like that was their, that, their plan from, from that point on. But, I mean, like you said, it is, you know, it's 11 games now without a win. Um, it will be over 100 days since we won a football match by the time we next kick off. Um, I mean, what, what what are we seeing here, do you think, in terms of the team and why has it got so so bad since that run of four games we had? It's, it's one of them, like, I think people are trying to, some people are trying to pin it on the manager, some people are trying to pin it on the players entirely. It just feels like everyone's just, it just feels like the season and, and the, the grind of the season just sort of got to everybody a little bit at the moment. It doesn't feel like anyone's really at the best like, you, know, do, 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 you mentioned there about that Carver-Lewin chance in inverted commas the, the Dobbin fires across like I was just thinking like of the, the Carver-Lewin the, you know, you, I think you were talking about it on the, the weekly with Les when we drew 3-3 free free there and he gets a late goal doesn't need to make a free all and like I just remember being so impressed with him in that goal because like it drops to him and his touch is great he's sharp and he finishes it really well and I sort of feel like the Carver-Lewin then would be like he would be he would be alert like, no, it's a hard chance, but he'll be alert and ready and waiting for that ball to come across just in case. But he's so out of form and so down on himself. As soon as he loses the initial header, his, you know, his head's down. He's like thinking about scoring a goal. And I mean, that's, that's sort of like we're in the mind. Like, it feels like a lot of people. And I, I, do you know what? I'd include the manager in the last couple of weeks in this based on what he said in his press co- after his, the games and his press conferences. It feels like a lot of people are starting to feel a little bit sorry for themselves and, and a bit hard on the look. And I think, I think to a degree, maybe the first part of this winless run. We've had a few VAR shockers, we've had a few games where you could say we should finish our chances, but I think by and large, today, the two tackles you mentioned in the first half, West Ham completely throw that away, and, and Brighton again, completely throw that away. You know, there's been external factors which have harmed us a lot this season, which you can throw your arms up and say, we've been unlucky there, everyone's out to get us, but I think the last three games in particular, they've got to take a look inwardly and at, at themselves, because they've, they've thrown away thrown away two points at Brighton certainly threw away three points arguably against West Ham and maybe didn't throw points away today but there was a game there to grab that they should have been involved in and they just let it slip through the fingers let's go back to what I said about it being all the more infuriating because you beat City are able to fucking kick off about it, whose fault it is left right and centre if you go deserve to lose go, those three games we didn't deserve to lose them um, and, and yet sat here screaming about whose fault is it the manager the players on the pitch it's that old old question isn't it well the, the manager's not on the pitch so it's not his fault but what he's setting up just seems to be mundane mundane and what he does now um, and, and I do have sympathy for him I mean, you're right about people feeling sorry for themselves I think we do as fans in general we're sitting here talking about oh we should have done this we should have done that um, and it's, it's an easy trap to get involved in as well, Matt, when you have to. We have to with those four home games coming up, apart from Liverpool. Um, you know, that, that is huge for us. And you talk about letting yourself down, you talk about feeling sorry for yourself. That's where it needs to be the complete opposite of this. And I think what, what you'd ask that question about is it Dyson? I think that's something that's a narrative that's gone through the whole, se- whole season. Is it narrative? Is it the players? Is it both? Um, games like this, I can fully understand why. I feel sorry for him more than I do for that squad because him what, what he can only hang his hands up there at the end of that game subs again because I've moaned about subs every week you move that away from what he does substitutional wise I felt really sorry for him because he could turn and throw his hands in the air and say what more do you want me to do here I've put these lads on I've put a shape and a system on that have worked they haven't had many chances whatsoever apart from two silly penalties we're giving away and we should score goals what more can I do about that? And I think that's a fair comment for them to make. Yeah. I, I think I think what they need to do though is like, I don't think they can just look at these the XG and look at the chances and just go and just hold the hands up and go, bloody hell, what there's nothing we can do about this. Like and, I, and again, like I, I don't know if this if this is something they're doing already, if they try to like they need to like shake something up, like behind like Get get the get the forward players to be like to speak to like a psychologist or something. Like get get someone in, maybe someone completely different who can work with the, the attacking players. Like I've seen that a lot today. Like get an attacking coach in, um, and like it, it's one of them. Like it doesn't even need to be like someone who's like, officially on like the the staff or anything. But, like just someone who can like work with the players, try and get them in a different mindset. Or because 
like I'm, I'm sort of split on this like part of me is, is very much in that camp you just said there of like we're creating chances and he's being let down by the players but part of me also thinks like does all this bleed in does the fact that we work on shape and we're pragmatic and we're defensive and we're disciplined and all the creativity and um, flair and inverted commas that we might have in our team is being sort of stripped away does that bleed into the fact that when we get those split second chances yeah. they're not sharp or they're not creative or they're not they're not ruthless with the finishing like I, but uh, like I, I, I think Daesh is too smart so, like, listen I'm not, not, a, not a huge fan of him I don't want him sacked I, I don't love the guy I'm very very you know lukewarm on him and really but I think he's a smart football manager and I think he will surely get to the point now where he thinks right whatever we're doing in training whatever we're telling these lads in front of goal like it's it's not working like it needs a drastic shake up because it's not like we've had five games now where like the XG's been massively in our favour and we've and it's like bloody hell we'll sort of just drop for us like it's been going on for ages this now like go back to the first game of the season when we played Fulham and we battered them massive XG in our favour and we just we missed loads of chances it's been going on all season this and I think I think that's why like maybe it's three weeks you're looking at it right what, what are we doing with these lads the, the attacking players what can we do differently do we need a different voice do we need to do different methods etc etc um, and maybe maybe that'll, that'll help to a degree like I, I don't know but, I, but then, like, the simple answer is that we're getting chances and the players are messing it up but like this is his team now with his imprint on it so I sort of feel like he it is sort of this is part of the environment he's created to a degree um, so I think that's sort of a long way long winded way of saying I think the players and him are sort of both to blame for this in a way yeah I, th- I think I think like Lazy said there that it's more the players than him but on, on the side of what you said there with, with him he's more of an intelligent footballer than I think people have said about him I think he's received a lot of criticism over his entire entire career not less from ourselves when we've played Burnley when he was there at Burnley like oh, I don't really want to go to Burnley on a winter's night at, at Turf Moor this is going to be a really shit game to watch because of the way he has them he's intelligent enough to have them in that reason that's the only way they're going to stay in the Premier League uh, with, with us I, I, I don't know what his general idea is and I don't think he's spoken about it in any sort of length since he's been our manager about or obviously we don't know behind closed doors what he does with the players and how he refers this to him but I, I don't see a specific system or style of play that he tries to do and, I, and I'm wondering well that's surely his is prerogative with that because he's the one who's coaching these players and I don't see him coming out I don't see him screaming at players saying they're not doing the right thing I know he's that type of guy who's on the sidelines we're trying to put that positive you know movements and stuff like that he's always clapping he's always screaming saying well done to people and all that and I get very that. high performance yeah he is that, that, he loves all that sort of thing he's the type who you know slaps a kid's head when he come off and say that was amazing he'll be in there now hugging uh, Dobbin do you know what I mean oh that was brilliant that mate you did really well he's that type of guy and, and I can see why that works at someone no offence to Burnley when you're getting them in the Premier League it's that siege mentality with us I feel like he's somewhere stuck in that I think he's he, he doesn't fully know where he wants to fully commit with how he sets this up I, I get what you're saying statistically and you know Mike Green all loves all this sort of thing and, and I love what he does for it and all that XGs and whatnot. and I'm pretty sure Sean Dice is that kind of manager who looks at and is told of this statistically he must be going absolutely ballistic at what he sees with them, thinking, why is this not working? The thing where I would criticise him is, criticise him is, where is he making the changes to try and make it work? That's where I have a problem with him. Does he see these guys are thinking, I can't have enough faith in these, that if I mix this up and I have us go gung-ho from the start of a game, that these lads are able to, I put the trust in them. The blatant answer is he's not. He's not able to make the sufficient changes to think, you know, fuck, this is not working. We've got to go to somewhere else here. Ian Moan and Steve Stone sit next to him say, yeah, lads, go and do something completely different and let's just see how it goes. You get into a stage now, mate, with our results, you're thinking... What's you know? What, what have we got to lose? Yeah, but obviously it's a game. But that seems to happen anyway. So that that's the point we're at right now, Matt. And look, how many times do we do post match in here? We're looking at Sky Sports and always looking at the uh, the, the current the current results of the five sides that are around us. Uh, Lincoln are winning four 0 Maybe we should go support them instead. Yeah, like, well, we, you know the way this is going. Maybe we, given what's going like, off the pitch as well, we might be ending up playing yeah. them in a league team. Well, well, like. I think like I was, I was going to mention that actually like so sort of obviously we've got a three week break now 
And like one of the things that sort of came to mind was watching that game today and like saw everyone on Twitter sort of about the manager and the players, etc. Like we've got a, we have got a big break now. We might get clarity on the takeover, we might get clarity on the, the second charge. Um, so it could be a, a seismic few weeks anyway. But I think what, what sort of struck me today, watching that game in particular, the thing about the room we've been on is that like, nobody at the football club now who's like actively involved in the first team, and I'll include the manager in this, the players obviously, uh, his staff, us as fans to a degree. Like, it, it feels like nobody is really able to do their job properly. And I, I've used job in inverted commas as a fan, but no one's really been able to do their job properly this season because of the stuff that's going on off the pitch. And I, like, I think that's, that's something that's still like, that's a black cloud that's looming over the entire season. Like it, it's with the points deduction, obviously as well. But we haven't got a board at the football club, really, in that sense. Um, we haven't got clarity over, over the takeover. But do you put that as a do you put that as a a lack of professionalism from these players and everything that is on the pitch? Well, then, but it, again, again, like so, it, you know, said about Dyson, like his methods all bleed into maybe the small things we've seen as a miss of chances. It all feeds in from the top as well, doesn't it? Because. Like, should it though? Should, well, I know it does. Well, yeah, well, right, but should it? So you, should, like, you were rocking to work on a Monday. Um, I, I rock into, say if I rocked into work, I work at the BBC on Monday morning, they say, the BBC is going down, everyone's being made redundant, Dave, we're going to give you one, sh- one shift a week as a freelancer. Is that is that part of oh, my you'd be in a hoof, yeah, massively. Yeah, exactly, but it's not it's not the work that I've done that affects that, and that's what I'm saying. So maybe a bad you'd example. You'd still be in a hoof, you'd still be annoying. Oh, yeah, of course you would, but... Then would that not have you reversely think oh, I've got to proper put my? I think for a bit. I, I think I think for a bit. But like if you went on, if you went on for months for clarity on that, you'd be like, right, come on. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's it's too easy. Let me, let, 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 me, let me give you an example. Yeah. Right, so like McNeil today. Like I've never seen a player in my life who looks more in need of a rest than that, that lad right now. Like he is obviously physically exhausted, mentally exhausted. He's not playing well but because we've got no other wingers. And Harrison is stinking the gaff out. He's got to play every week, hasn't he? He's, he's, you know, th- there's no alternative unless we go to like a five-three-two or something. That, that means bringing Keenan, like, a, yeah. And Dice loves him. Say, say, if we, say, if we'd been run better like the last couple of years, then we probably wouldn't have sold the Worthy on the last day of the window, would we? Because Dice said as much, didn't he? He wants to keep him. We might not have sold Damari Gray on the last day of the window, which means they would have played a little bit more. He might have come off the bench. 20 minutes more every game McNeil might have missed the odd game and all of a sudden we're not in a situation where we're in March where Dwight McNeil who has got you know a huge personal crisis going on off the pitch is having to play every single minute because there's, there's literally nobody else for, for, for him to, to turn to really in that sense and, like, and they're, they're the things that like because uh, the top of the club is so messed up and so financially like, ruined and we've got no leadership like all these things trickle down, like I'm, I think we're starting to see them now, like manifest in the pitch. Like, even even as fans, like like that, that Crystal Palace game the other the other Monday, like do you remember like the anxiety like in the ground and like and how everyone felt about that. And it's because we like we've lost points. We're down near the bottom. We don't know what's going to happen with the takeover. We don't know what's going to happen. And, and I think it, after a while, it all feeds in. Like you know, it might it might be one of them, like you said, where you, like, a one-off game you can put it to the back of your mind. But over time, it gradually wears you down and wears you down and wears you down. And I think we're at the point of, as a football club now where it's like, it's just all cumulatively built, built up. And we're like, fans are fed up. Players are knackered and fed up. The manager's starting to look, sound a bit pissed off and fed up as well. And it's just, it's, it's all just starting to gradually build to a point where it's like, God, just, we just need something. Like, I, I don't know what it is or how, or how we get it. But like, it's just like we all need... Like, just need something to happen that's good that can give everybody a bit of a lift but it, the worry you think is, is like with this charge you know with these potential cowboy owners you might be or might not be getting it's like what's what's the what's the way out like how, how, how do we find our our valve from all this pressure to be able to breathe again it's it, it just feels like it's all just built up to a point where it's like everyone's just absolutely fed up and fucked basically from well, what you said well, like, you know, well, this is where like hopefully it's like I mean, I suppose when you when you not want a football match, you want another one quickly so you can try and win one. Like this is where you hope that this this break could maybe help them a bit, isn't it? Like because they've got they've got to, they're obviously going to go away. I mean, if they've got no money, I don't know where they're going to go. Like uh, Skegness or something. No, it, it's kicking the can further down the road. Let's face it, we'll be having a similar conversation about this. Hopefully, not being talking about getting relegated to the championship or administration or whatever it is that might come our way. 
Um, we'll still be having this conversation of the way this football club has run, um, how much this has an impact. Me and you could sit here all night long talking about how do you get out of this. In what you know, if we're sitting there and you walk in, is the Everton owner tomorrow, and you think, right, I'm going to sort this out. What can you possibly do at this stage? That is where I do draw the line on criticising players and manager. We've sort of more minute about the game itself and why things are happening. Systems, dice is done. People who are playing well, McNeil who's knackered, Harrison who's crap, all that sort of thing. We've been down quite quite significantly. Um, but that just going back to you know how you start looking at this. This is where I do have a lot of time for Sean Dice because if you're getting somebody in who's in this situation. And it, you know, you can, there's a lot of similarities between this and what happened with Frank Lampard last season. It's hard, you know, I, I don't like the lad whatsoever. In, in Dice, no, I'm no fan of his whatsoever. I wasn't happy when we got him. But by and large, I couldn't think of a better manager to have in a situation like this. It's not in comparison to what happened with Burnley, but it was a backs against the wall mentality of Burnley constantly. That, that to me is sort of what it feels we should be like in this situation. But like you say, it's so unique that you've got all sorts of shit going on. Like you said, a black cloud all over your head. For how long can you have your back against the wall for? Like that's the that's the thing. Like, like but he wouldn't say it was. He wouldn't say it was because a, a back against the wall feels like it's it's still fair, despite the fact it feels like shit. And that's what Burnley it was. It's like, oh, we're doing so well here, lads, but we haven't got a team. I can't buy players. Backs against the wall. But if we win and do well. Everyone's loving it. Everyone thinks we're top class at what we do. That's why Sean Dice become a success in inverted commas to what he did with Burnley. With us, I completely agree. You, you, you haven't really got your back against the wall. You've just got your back, just looking for where it is. Do you know what I mean? And that, that, that's what that's what it feels like for me. It's with these lads there as well. And, and Dice, when he's taking this job, I'm pretty certain he won't have thought that it'd be in this sort of situation. Anything like what we're in right now, not with just the appeals and slicks and whatever things that get, that get thrown into it um, and I think that going back to, to overall what we've gone around in circles a little bit here go back to what you said was spot on when you think that the the impact that all these different things are having can't help but have an impact on players and the manager as well and that goes back to what we were saying where, where does this come from there and when he goes in on a Monday morning whenever it is Psychologically, like you say, you get somebody in, you know, that's worked at different clubs. They've done bits and pieces like that in the past where psychological people have come in and, and maybe got people in the right attitude, kind of thing. Um, that coupled with what he does with these players as well, I have sympathy with the lad. Um, there's no other way out of it, though, Matt. We have to win some games. We have to win some games. It'd be great if we, everybody was able to rock in and mentally say, and that's what we thought would happen let's face it when we started getting these things going against us financially and points and all that the first thing we were all talking about was Wait, that, that's going to give us the kick up the arse we need it's been the complete opposite that's what's so scary looking at this so him the players here we're going to have to go as well you'll see you'll see the protests outside Goodison I'm sure all that will come along that's that, that's the only way we get past this and I can see you know, what other roads you go down other than trying to get everybody up as possibly as high as they possibly can, and that includes all of us as fans. Yeah, it's it's heavy, isn't it? Um... <laughs> it's heavy, mate. It's really heavy. Despite the fact we just started this by talking about played well there at Old Trafford, you know what I mean? But look at what we've got next: two away games. Like, I, I, I don't know what like playing well looks like. Not like it's just weird. Like it's just a strange game that today. But um... I think that's Sean Dice in a nutshell. I don't think you ever look at Sean Dice's career and think they've played really well and won that. He's not that manager. He's by all means necessary. That's what he is. And that's why that tiny bit of light at the end of the tunnel, as far as I can see, is him being the boss in this. Because I couldn't think of anybody. You know, people saying to me today, I said this one win in 15. That's actually worse than what Lampard got sacked for last year. He got, he got sacked after one win in 14. And the media thing people are replying to me, rightly so, is you clearly want him sacked, Dave. You clearly want him sacked. I'm not. I naively have put that out saying, this is how difficult things have been. Under Lampard, you look at it and think he was a shite manager. I'm doing that for 18 months down the line. I'm saying it's not because the manager's shite. It's a load of other things that are smack in the middle of all this. Is why we've not been able to pick up the results that have been better than Frank Lampard at the time. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely redundant to talk about. Like, if anyone wants the manager sacked at this point, like, I, I couldn't argue with them because like that is an awful run, like you said. But 
there's nobody to sack him. There's nobody. There's nobody to. So every time Paul Merson's doing the Palace Luton game, and every time he comes on the screen, uh, Dave, 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 Dave shaking in, in fear. Yeah, but like, well, there's nobody to sack him, is there? Like, there's no, there's no board. Well, there's We've got no, no money. I like, tell you what, you go, you go back a year's time <clears throat> without all this that we've known of, and obviously this is you know hindsight. You wouldn't be bothered about changing him if this was when, when he was in Frank Lampard's position. You'd be screaming for a new Everton manager. Um, it shows you how much of a petrifying position we're in right now to not even look at that. You wouldn't even dream of sacking this fella right now. But I think that the one thing is on, on our side, and I've said it a few times in this pod, he's the type of fella you want in there. Um, despite the fact he has these weaknesses with whatever it is, changes, system, formation, uh, choices of player, um, all of that. I mean, the only thing I noticed today when the team and squad was picked, I looked on that bench for the first time in a while, Thought, do you know what? Best than United. <laughs> oh, I was going to. Yeah, was. I was looking at it thinking you've got some lads there that you could change about here. Yeah. You know, perhaps start Gomez, who ends up bringing on. Um, who I thought again was really good when he came on. Zero pace, as everybody said, but he, he, he knows how to play properly. He's, uh, he's he's a typical Barca player who just didn't have any pace at the time when he was there. You looked at that. You looked I'd, at. I'd be starting him if he's fit after the break. Oh, absolutely. I thought. I thought Onana. The shot he had, I put, I put a tweet straight after this saying, who do you think's got the worst shot? Onana or Adrissa Gay? Because both of them are woeful of kicking a ball towards a goal from 18 yards. James got on his corners as well. He, he's, been, he's been excluded like Ashley Young from ever taking them again. I also said it looked like he was trying to find the linesman rather than any of our players when he was trying to whip that in. Um, I mean, it, it, it's the amateur stuff that you could, again, spend a long time talking about. Why are we so far down aside from all the shit that goes on away from the game? We're like that because a lot of these lads really aren't that good. And we're fortunate, I'll say it again, we're fortunate. As much as desperate it is, looking here and thinking we need Luton to get beat. That, that's really sad for us to have to sit here and say this. Um, but that's, that's the position we're in right now. We're sat here, what's left here? Ten minutes left in Palace v Luton. And I'm desperate that Luton... Luton, me and you rocked down to Luton, didn't we? To interview Galloway, and that yeah, was what? Like, League two then, weren't we? Then we were like, oh, what a nice little club these are. It was just before the Euros in 2018 or something like that, wasn't it? Or 2020, where they were using that for Denmark's training. Who was the manager? Was Graham, was Graham Jones, the manager, wasn't he? To, <laughs> he yeah, was, we met yeah. him, yeah. And, uh, Gary, was... Gary Brabham was there, one of his scouts, who used to be at Everton. Yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah. yeah. And he was, it was so... That, Honestly, you went down anyway. We're not talking about how nice Luton is because we might, they're not enemies at the moment. They had a lovely training ground, though. But that's the point. We went down there, and you just think about how, how quickly things change. They were definitely in at least League One. And, and we, we sat there talking about, our, you know, feeling a little bit sorry for Luton. Mate, they could easily finish above us now. It's just, that's how far, that's how, that's how far we've dropped. Not how good they've been. We're sitting here talking about how shit and how desperate Everton are now. All of that's happened in what the five, six years since we were down there. Well done to them, but come on, man, Everton shouldn't be anywhere near this sort of trouble. We'll leave it there. Done over half an hour. Uh, somehow in that game, but Sheffield Wednesday, is Sheffield United trying to catch us here. Uh, as well. That's not. It's not going down that route. Um, we will leave it there. Uh, cheers today. Thanks everyone for listening. Uh, if you listen to us on YouTube, leave us a comment. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, and give us a rating and a review as well. If you're listening on Spotify or iTunes, but yeah, uh, that is us for now. We'll be back on Blue Monday. We'll have content this week, and then we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do for the next three weeks <laughs> uh, as well. But um, point a week, yeah. <laughs> we will, uh, we will, yeah. We will leave it there anyway. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. At least Everton were. Got beat early and he got it out of the way. Um, Just don't think of the score. Yeah. Just don't think of the score. We play fine. Three Thanks. weeks without them. Oh, amazing. Um, One of the two games, man. Or two away is Bournemouth, Newcastle. Newcastle. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, let's not forget about that. They'll, ne- they'll never happen, though. But three weeks is ages away. Um, but yeah, cheers for listening, everybody. Up the toffees. We'll catch you soon. <laughs>